If you've been struggling with velvet yarn because it looks messy, loopy, or wormy, then I've got the video for you. I know I have been struggling and I am super excited to share what I've learned with you because the best part about this trick is that it literally only costs $2. I am Shannon, this is Shannon Talks Yarn, where I talk about all things yarn and from a crochet perspective. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say wormy or loopy yarn, let's take a look. So let's take a look at this uh, whip I have going on here, which I have had on pause for a little bit. I am using this Lion Brand Velux, and it is the color, let's see what color it is, lilac. Um, I do really like this yarn. It's a four weight, and it's got a good amount of yardage in here, about almost 250 yards. So um, I like the yarn. Um, I have a video I will link down in the description box where I unbox that. But enough about the yarn, and let's talk about the wormy, loopy velvet, which I believe is the number one reason crocheters hate working with velvet. So in this project, you can see here, I did start with a magic ring, and I've got a couple little, whoops, I should switch to the other end of this crochet hook. I've got a couple little loops here. And this is a solid granny, so you can see it. Um, but as I pan out, you can see lots of loops. Uh, look at that. You know, it seems to do okay in some parts where I've either had my tension enough, and I thought tension was the problem for a long time. And I'm sure that does contribute to some of it, but um, I'm gonna be frogging this project. And I'm gonna do it because I figured out how to make this nice and smooth. If you're ready to stop screaming and start crocheting, stick around. Let's start out by talking about some of these new projects I've been working on with Velvet Yarn. And the downside is I am a work from your stash type of gal. I buy yarns I like, and I like to work out of my own little um, yarn stash. And this does mean sometimes that I don't have the best yarns for tutorials and stuff um, because I tend to gravitate towards darker colors. Um, but I have this bucket. It's I don't know if you'd call it a bucket hat or a cloche hat. Um, and I made this very recently. And this is a yarn I will show you in just a minute. And then I also have this <laughs> black hat. It is a cat hat. Um, you can kind of see it when I, um, you know, make like a head shape out of it right there. Um, it's got the two little ears. And what I will do is, I'll just slip it on. I am filming this in the spring, so I do feel a little silly wearing a black hat cap. Um, but this is what it is. And again, this is, I had kind of discovered this trick, secret, hack, whatever you want to call it, and I wanted to test it out on several yarns before um, popping it up here just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Um, I do have a uh, video out about this I made around um, like September, October of last year, so I will link that uh, down in the description box if you want to see how to make this cat hat. Um, but again, black is probably the worst color to crochet on camera with. So, um, I've got one other thing to show you. And then I also had this scrap of a deep teal, um, which I did, oh, there's a little fuzzy. Um, I did a bow on a scrunchie and would you let me know down in the comments? I, like I said, I did a video on the cat hat. Um, but if you are interested in this, uh, bucket cloche hat or like this bow, will you let me know? Um, I am not super great at tutorials yet. I know I need more practice, but I would like to write up some free, simple patterns. So if there is interest in it, would you let me know? Um, and then those are the things that I will do the free patterns on. But let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, I had a little bit of scrap yarn left in this deep teal color. This one is discontinued, but let me go ahead and 
show you uh, the velvet yarns that I use. The Hobby Lobby website is not known for being uh, super user friendly and typing in velvet yarn does not really get you in the direction you want. So you want velvety smooth. And what I used was the velvety smooth Aran weight. And here it is, this is the regular price. Everybody knows, buy it with us on the 30% off week. But the, this is the actual color I use for my bucket hat, the aubergine, I believe is how that is pronounced. And it's a really nice yarn to work with. Here are the other, other colors that they have. And that teal one was the same, but it was one I had gotten maybe two years ago. Let's go in for a close up. I've got my projects all laid out here. And let's go ahead and start with the one that's probably the hardest um, to see the stitches here. Again, like I said, I um, work from my stash. <laughs> so you can kind of see here, um, I know it's the light's probably gonna blow it out just a little bit, um, but you really cannot see any loops. These are half double crochets and um, that worked out really, really well right there. This is gonna be probably the easiest to see my stitches. And yeah, it is not wormy at all. These are single crochets. And then of course I did just take um, some yarn and wrap it around um, to attach the bow. And then here is my hat, my bucket hat. I started out in the round, um, did a row there to um, like the, the top. And then this here would be like the middle of the hat and then my brim. So these are, what did I do here? I did all double crochets and then I went down to single crochets. I think I said that wrong. This is the brim, top, middle, brim. Um, and then single crochets in the brim right there. But as you can see, that is actually looking pretty darn sturdy. And with this hack, it also made this hat easier to deal with and not so floppy. I mean, regular velvet yarn is pretty darn floppy. So this actually helped give it a little bit of structure. So let me know, have you guessed what my secret to velvet yarn is yet? Uh, if you have a guess, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Or if you'd like me to hurry up, just go ahead and write, hurry up, Shannon, tell us what the $2 secret is. It is Hirschner's Afghan yarn. So I have talked about this yarn in the past. This is not sponsored. Kirchner's has no idea who I am. Um, I tag them all the time, but they don't know who I am. <laughs> um, I have a video I will go ahead and link right up here in, in the description box with um, uh, Hirschner's unboxing I did. And I got a bunch of these yarns for my temperature blanket. And um, you haven't seen an update for a little while because the first three months of the year were pretty much exactly the same. They were freezing um, and I thought it would be boring and I'm a little bit behind and I got sidetracked by this project. So these were all yarns from my temperature blanket. Um, and I picked them out of the stash going by the colors of velvet I had. Um, but this is a game changer for me and working with velvet yarn. And the best part is this yarn has changed so much. I have some of the older Afghan yarn with a different label on it and it feels entirely different. This yarn is really, it is silky smooth. It is a joy to work with. And when you touch the hat, you cannot tell a difference between, well, number one, you can't really see or feel the Afghan yarn, but because this has this nice kind of furriness to it, um, it's like a soft furriness, you honestly cannot, um, feel a difference at all between that and the velvet, other than the fact the velvet has a little bit of structure to it. So I'm gonna take you to the Hirschner's website where you can see the Afghan yarn. This is $1.99, and don't get this confused with the older Hirschner's Afghan yarn. The label is a little bit different. They've got color blocks where this one has the loops, and it is also priced cheaper and there's a lot less colors available. So this is the new stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, take you down through some of the many, many colors that they have. 
like I said, I'm using these in my temperature blanket and they are really delightful to work with. And I think this is an absolutely good variety of colors, uh, you know, to match about whatever type of available um, velvet yarn there is out there. I have not used the Hirschner's baby yarn, um, so I cannot, or the, they have baby Afghan yarn, so I can't speak to that, but those do have um, a few different color choices, and I'm assuming since it has the word baby in the name, it is also pretty soft, so maybe check that out. And another great option is this two-ply classic Afghan yarn. It is just as soft as the original one that I showed you, and I've also gotten this for my temperature blanket, so I can firsthand tell you it is just as soft. This one runs, um, I think, $3.50 normally, but I've routinely seen them put it on sale for $3. There's a few other different color choices than the other ones, but these uh, skeins are about twice the size as the $2 ones. Um, limited colors and they are slightly different, but equally as soft. So I can also recommend these as a great alternative for um, putting in with your velvet yarn. So are you interested in seeing this work up? Because I've got a couple little scrap balls of yarn here and I thought this would be a great opportunity just to show you. Um, this is just a little bit of four-way velvet yarn that I had left over. I think it might have been something called like uh, Bernat Baby Velvet, something like that. And then this is some Hirschner's Afghan yarn in the color cream. These are not an exact match, but they're the lightest I had in each of these. So I thought it would be best um, for you to be able to actually see the stitches. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna start out here making a simple chain and uh, get this going. And my plan is to make up just a short swatch here so you can check out the stitches. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually crochet that fast? I thought I would just chill out here and work on this, and I wasn't sure if it was a weird camera angle or not, but that's just how I look when I am crocheting. So uh, it was a pretty small ball um, that I had, and I really think that it blended better than I even thought with the cream-colored Afghan yarn. It adds a little bit of dimension, but it doesn't really jump out at you. So I did four rows of half double crochets and two rows of double crochets and you can see it made a huge difference just keeping it like tucked in tight and nice and uniform and really crisping up those stitches. I hope you found this tip helpful to you. I know it was a serious game changer for me and if this can help you enjoy working with velvet yarn again that would make me so happy. Let me know in the comments if you are team velvet or team no. I don't know what you'd want to call it, um, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this subject. And if you would like, there is another video right up here that YouTube thinks you will like. And there's also a little circle right here. And if you are not subscribed yet, I would appreciate it if you enjoyed this, if you would consider subscribing. As always, thanks for talking yarn with me. Bye, guys.